Hello students, welcome to the channel Naman Educations. Today in this video we are going to discuss chapter The Human Eye and the Colorful World for class 10. And this video is part 5 of this chapter. In this video we will discuss about refraction of light through prism. We will also discuss about dispersion spectrum and recombination of spectrum colors as explained by Newton. So be ready with pencil scale eraser because you will have to draw some diagrams also. Okay. So at first we are going to discuss about refraction of light through prism. So our topic is refraction of light through prism. The shape of the prism is like this. Uh, this is 2D diagram and in three dimensional view you can see that there are five surfaces. This is suppose the first, its back side is second, this is first surface, this one is second and the surface which we can see here easily is the third one its back side is fourth one and bottom five there are five surfaces in a glass prism and we are we will discuss about triangular prism so how many surfaces are there five surfaces and this surface three and surface four back side surface they are called refracting surfaces. So which surfaces are refracting surfaces here? 3 and 4. And the angle between these two surfaces is called angle of prism. So in total, how many surfaces are there? 5 surfaces out of that 5 surfaces three surfaces are rectangular this one rectangular back side rectangular bottom is also rectangular and two surfaces this one number one and number two they are triangular in shape and this type of prism are called triangular prisms okay so if i ask you here angle a represents what it represents angle of prism and for convenience we will draw just the outline of the triangular surface to represent the prism. So this surface and this one, these surfaces are called refracting surface. Because yahi se refraction hoga, hum log diagram mein And this one is also refracting surface. This angle is called angle of prism. And this is called the base of the prism. So how many refracting surfaces are there in a prism? There are two refracting surfaces. And if a ray of light passes through a prism, it suffers refraction two times. It suffers refraction two times. Okay. So we discussed about the prism, the surfaces, the angle of the prism. And in the next part, I am going to discuss how to draw the ray diagram for refraction of light through a prism. We will draw the ray diagram for a ray of light when it passes through prism, how the direction changes, how the refraction takes place. Okay, so eraser so that you can draw the diagram which I am going to draw properly. So our topic is refraction of light through prism for a ray of light. So for convenience, we draw the outline of the prism, we draw this triangle to represent the prism and this is refracting surface this one is also refracting surface this is base and this angle is the angle of prism a ray of light incident obliquely on the prism this point is the point of incidence so if I draw a perpendicular here this perpendicular is the normal suppose this point is this P O is the incident ray and O 
n dash is the normal. This ray of light is passing from air to glass and we know that when the ray of light passes from air to glass that is rarer medium to denser medium it bends towards the normal. It should have gone in this path but when the ray of light passes from rarer medium to denser medium what happens? It bends towards the normal. So the ray of light has bent, it should have gone like this, it has bent towards the normal. So this is the second refracting surface and here this is the point of incidence. Point of incidence, this one, let this be O dash. This ray of light is passing from glass to air, denser medium to rarer medium. So what will Denser medium se rarer medium mein jane se kya hone wala hai? The ray of light bends away from normal. So hum log for convenience normal draw kar lete. Aur ye common point li lete n dash. So n dash, o dash, n double dash. This is the second normal. And this ray of light, refracted ray, when it passes out of the prism it is passing from glass to air it bends away from normal so when a ray of light passes through the two refracting surfaces of the prism there is double refraction and after the double refraction the finally the emergent ray it bends towards the base of the prism it bends towards the base so this angle here angle between incident and normal is called angle of incidence this is refracted ray. O, O dash is the refracted ray. And the angle between refracted ray and normal, this one, is called angle of refraction. This one, angle of emergence. Because this is emergent ray. O dash Q. This angle between the two refracting surfaces is the angle of prism. So, this is the direction of the incident ray and this is the direction of the emergent ray. If I produce emergent ray back, if I produce emergent ray back, this emergent ray on producing back makes certain angle, makes certain angle with the incident ray and this angle is called angle of deviation this angle is the angle of deviation so here if I ask you the, in this triangular prism this surface lower surface represents the base of the prism these two are the refracting surfaces the angle is between the refracting surfaces is called angle of prism and this diagram represents the ray diagram for refraction of light a ray of light when it is allowed to pass through a prism so you can do the leveling here. If I ask you, here PO is what? In this diagram, PO represents what? Incident ray. PO re incident ray, O O dash. O O dash represents refracted ray. Then O dash Q. O dash Q represents emergent ray. O dash Q represents emergent ray. Then angle I, angle of incidence, angle R, angle of refraction, angle E, angle of emergence, angle D, angle of deviation, angle A is the angle of prism. So angle I here is the angle of incidence angle R is the angle of refraction angle E is the angle of emergence angle D is the angle of deviation angle A is the angle of prism angle of prism so this angle this is the angle of deviation and in case of prism I plus E is always equals to A plus D. That is, the sum of the angle of incidence and angle of emergence is always equal to the sum of the angle of prism and the angle of deviation. 
So this ray diagram represents the refraction of a ray of light when it is allowed to pass through a prism. And if I ask you what is angle of deviation, angle of deviation is the angle formed between the incident ray produced forward and the emergent ray produced backward. This angle of deviation indicates by how much angle, by how much angle the incident ray gets deviated after passing through the prism. Ye incident ray ko is path mein jana tha. Lekin prism ke wajah se ye kitna angle se deviate, direction change ho gaya. This angle represents that. And the relation we have discussed, I plus E equals to A plus D. So, draw this diagram properly using pencil scale eraser and very important diagram. So, we are going to discuss two important terms. First one, dispersion and second one, spectrum of light. So, if you look at the diagram, you can understand. If I allow a beam of white light, this time I am not saying about a ray, this is a beam of white light. White light, the ordinary light in our surrounding is white light and it has a combination of seven colored light. So a beam of white light, if it is allowed to pass through prism, what happens? It splits into its constituent colors, three, four, five, six and seven. It splits into its constituent color and if I place a screen here, I can obtain the band of seven colors, three, four, five, six and seven. We can obtain the band of seven color on the screen and they will be in the order of the lowermost is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So if I allow white light to pass through prism, what happens? It splits into its constituent colors, seven colors. That seven colors are violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. And it is red as Vibgior. Okay. So what are the seven colors? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. And if I ask you which color deviates the most? Kiska bending sabse jada hua? It is violet. Which colored light deviates the least? It is red colored light. Okay. So you note down the definition of these two terms. First one dispersion. Second one spectrum of light. What is dispersion? The phenomenon of splitting of white light into its constituent seven colors on passing through a glass prism is called dispersion of light and spectrum of light the band of seven colors obtained on a screen after dispersion of white light through prism is called spectrum of light so this phenomenon is called dispersion and the band of seven color obtained here is called spectrum of white light no doubt we have now discussed two important terms, one is dispersion, another is spectrum. And now we are going to discuss what is the reason behind the dispersion of white light. When a beam of white light is allowed to pass through prism, why it splits into its seven constituent colors. So let us try to understand that this is a glass prism. If we allow a beam of white light to pass through prism, we know that it splits into its seven constituent colors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If we place a screen here, we can obtain that seven colored light or the band of seven colored light. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We can obtain this band of seven colored light and this band is called spectrum. And the order of colored light will be like this violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So if I ask you which colored light deviates the most it is violet and the least it is red. 
बट ऐसा होता है क्यों है कि व्हाइट लाइट प्रिज्म प्रिज्म से जाने से प्रिज्म से पास होने से वाई इट स्प्लिट इन टू इट सेवन कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट कलर लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट बिफोर दैट यू शुड नो वन थिंग वायलेट इंडिगो ब्लू ग्रीन येलो ऑरेंज और रेड ये सेवन कलर में वायलेट का वेव लेंथ डिनोटेड बाई सिंबॉल लेमडा क्लास नाइन में मिला होगा आप लोगों को चैप्टर साउंड वायलेट का वेव लेंथ इज मिनिमम और रेड का वेव लेंथ इज मैक्सिमम ये उनका कैरेक्टरिस्टिक प्रॉपर्टी है तो वेव लेंथ सबसे ज्यादा किसका रेड का वेव लेंथ सबसे कम किसका वायलेट का एंड एनादर रिलेशन फ्रॉम क्लास नाइन इट इज लैमडा इक्वल्स टू वी बाई एफ वेव के लिए ये रिलेशन था वेव लेंथ इज इक्वल्स टू स्पीड ऑफ वेव बाय फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द वेव सो हियर वी इज इक्वल्स टू लैमडा इन टू एफ so from here we can write f is constant for a wave therefore v is directly proportional to lambda yani jis wave ka wavelength zyada hai us wave ka kisi medium mein speed bhi zyada hoga okay so more the more the wavelength the more is the speed so यहां पे हम लोग को पता है वेवलेंथ सबसे ज्यादा किसका वेवलेंथ इज मैक्सिमम फॉर रेड सो स्पीड ऑफ लाइट इज मैक्सिमम फॉर विच कलर विच कलर लाइट मैक्सिमम फॉर रेड एंड द स्पीड ऑफ लाइट इज मिनिमम फॉर वायलेट मिनिमम फॉर वायलेट तो मैंने एक रिलेशन एस्टाब्लिश करने का कोशिश किया कि वेवलेंथ का स्पीड के साथ रिलेशन क्या है फॉर अ रे ऑफ लाइट और फॉर अ वेव स्पीड ज्यादा होने से हम लोग को पता है वेवलेंथ भी ज्यादा होगी यानी स्पीड और वेवलेंथ लेंथ डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल जिस वेव का वेवलेंथ ज्यादा उसका स्पीड भी ज्यादा किसी एक मीडियम में So, हम लोग को स्पीड का आइडिया हो गया लेकिन यहां तो बेंडिंग का बात हो रहा है यहां रिफ्रैक्शन का बात हो रहा है एंड यू शुड नो वन थिंग रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स इज इक्वल्स टू सी बाई वी जहां सी का मतलब स्पीड ऑफ लाइट थ्री इंटू टेन टू दावर एट मीटर पर सेकेंड एन इक्वल्स टू सी बाई वी एंड सी इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो एन इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू वी जहां एन का मतलब है रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स N का मतलब रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स और स्पीड का रिलेशन कैसा है इनवर्स रिलेशन रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स इज इनवर्स प्रोपोर्शनल टू द स्पीड ऑफ वेव और स्पीड ऑफ लाइट इन अ मीडियम तो हम लोग को स्पीड का आइडिया हो गया अब हम लोग रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स का आइडिया ले लेते हैं यहां से जिस वेव का वेव ज्यादा उस वेव का स्पीड भी ज्यादा किसी एक मीडियम में और स्पीड ज्यादा होने से रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स कम होता है रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स इट इंडिकेट्स बेंडिंग एबिलिटी सो अगर आपको पूछा जाए कि आउट ऑफ दिस सेवन कलर कौन सा कलर लाइट के लिए ग्लास का रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स सबसे ज्यादा होगा किसके लिए ग्लास का रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स सबसे ज्यादा होगा आउट ऑफ दिस सेवन कलर इट इज फॉर वायलेट बट कैसे वायलेट के लिए रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स सबसे ज्यादा होने का रीजन क्या है वायलेट का वेव लेंथ कम है वेव लेंथ कम होने से स्पीड भी कम होगा स्पीड कम होने से रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ज्यादा होगा और ज्यादा रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ज्यादा बेंडिंग वी नो दैट द मोर इज द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स द मोर इज द बेंडिंग सो आउट ऑफ दिस सेवन कलर किस कलर का बेंडिंग सबसे ज्यादा होगा ग्लास में किस कलर के लिए ग्लास का रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स सबसे ज्यादा होगा जिसका स्पीड सबसे कम होगा स्पीड सबसे कम किसका है वायलेट का क्यों है क्योंकि उसका वेव लेंथ कम है सो वायलेट का वेव लेंथ कम इसलिए स्पीड कम स्पीड कम इसलिए रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ज्यादा 
और ज्यादा रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स यानी ज्यादा बेंडिंग सो आउट ऑफ द सेवन कलर मैं अगर आपको पूछू कौन सा कलर लाइट ज्यादा बैंड करेगा और मैक्सिमम बैंडिंग होगा इट इज फॉर वायलेट सो हैव यू अंडरस्टूड द रीजन रीजन क्या वायलेट क्यों वायलेट इसलिए क्योंकि वायलेट का वेव सबसे कम है वेव कम होने की वजह से इसका स्पीड भी कम है स्पीड कम होने की वजह से रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ज्यादा है रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ज्यादा होने की वजह से बेंडिंग ज्यादा है कौन सा कलर लाइट का बेंडिंग मिनिमम आउट ऑफ द सेवन कलर इट इज रेड रेड का क्यों रेड का वेव ज्यादा है वेव ज्यादा तो स्पीड ज्यादा स्पीड ज्यादा तो रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स कम रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स कम तो बेंडिंग कम ओके सो वेन We allow white light to pass through prism. It splits into its seven constituent color, and that phenomenon is called dispersion. And the band of seven color obtained is called what? Spectrum. And we have discussed the reason behind dispersion of white light when a beam of white light is allowed to pass through a prism. Now we'll discuss about recombination of spectrum colors as explained by Newton. so this is a triangular prism it is placed on its base if i allow a beam of white light to pass through prism we know that this white light will split into its constituent colors okay and if i place another prism on its vertex and in such a way that in such a way that the two refracting surfaces of the two prism will join like this Uh, there is almost no gap but in this diagram i am showing some gap for convenience now this band of seven colors when they enter into the second prism through the refracting surface we know that whenever a ray of light passes through a prism it bends it bends always towards the base of the prism so all this colored light will try to bend towards the base so the lower most one is violet and the upper most one is red and we know about the bending which colored light bends the most it is violet which colored light bends the least in glass prism it is red to ab kya hoga ye violet ka bending hoga maximum red ka bending hoga minimum to ye zyada bend hoga violet violet ka bending zyada hoga aur red ka bending kam hoga so all this colored light will recombine will recombine and will come out of the prism as white light will come out of the prism this combination of several colors light will produce white light so we allowed white light to enter and white light came out of the second prism and what happened here recombination of the spectrum colors of white light so this experiment was actually done by newton to show that white light consists consists of seven colored light and that seven colored are the colors are first one violet then indigo blue green yellow orange and red and if you look at this diagram properly this uh, two prism combination of these two prism can be compared to a glass lab can be compared to a glass lab we know that in case of glass lab if we allow light to pass or white light to pass we get white light back we think that there is no dispersion actually this glass lab is a combination of two prisms one prism splits the seven color and the other one recombines and the recombination produces white light so 
the glass prism is considered to be a combination of two prism and thereby if white light is allowed to pass through glass uh, the glass lab it remains white okay and if white light is allowed to pass through a prism it splits into seven constituent color and that seven colors the combination is called spectrum and this phenomenon of splitting of white light is called dispersion of light in this part i am going to discuss about formation of rainbow formation of rainbow is related to the different phenomena which are related to light like refraction of light dispersion of light like another phenomenon is internal reflection so all these are responsible for formation of rainbow and rainbow is uh, formation of rainbow is a spectacular natural phenomenon now we'll try to understand how rainbow is formed during or after a shower of rain there are droplets of water in the atmosphere and these droplets of water will behave like prism and if there is bright light during the rain shower or sometimes during the rain shower there may be sunlight bright sunlight so if such situation is there that is the best situation where for rainbow formation takes place so i am considering a beam of sunlight is entering where into the raindrop and this raindrop behaves like a prism so it will split white light sunlight into its constituent color we know that violet bends the most and red bends the least ye ek transparent medium hai raindrop is made up of water so ye transparent to light idhar se agar incident ho ke refract ho ke dusra side se bahar nikal jana chahiye tha but light yahan se bahar nahi ja sakta because of certain conditions एंड एक कंडीशन वो है लाइट अगर डेंसर मीडियम से रेरर मीडियम जाती है और एक और सिचुएशन है कुछ क्रिटिकल एंगल से रिलेटेड विच आई विल डिस्कस इन एन अदर सेपरेट वीडियो दैट पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक सो कुछ कंडीशंस यहां फुलफिल होने से क्या होता है देयर विल बी रिफ्लेक्शन लाइट रिफ्रैक्ट नहीं करके रिफ्लेक्ट हो जाती है सो देयर इज व्हाट रिफ्लेक्शन एंड आफ्टर रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्रैक्शन व्हेन लाइट रेस एंटर आवर आईज we can see this natural spectacular phenomenon that is formation of rainbow to so, rainbow formation mein kya kya involve hua yahan pe dispersion dispersion ke baad internal reflection internal reflection ke baad refraction ye sab ka involvement ke baad we can see what this natural phenomenon that is formation of rainbow so you can note down the points points for that are the reason or causes of formation of rainbow number 1 is dispersion dispersion of sunlight and second one internal reflection internal reflection and the third one refraction of light refraction of light i have discussed formation of rainbow in relation to class 10 only but this uh, in higher class you will get about primary rainbow secondary rainbow reason behind why rainbow appears semi circular or circular in shape so these will be discussed in higher classes and one question i i want to ask to you and the question is have you seen formation of such pattern colored pattern seven colored pattern in nature other than during rain shower or during rainfall and you can see formation of such colored pattern if you visit near a waterfall near a waterfall in the atmosphere there are droplets of water and if there is bright sunlight you can see that formation of colored pattern okay and so what is the reason i think you have understood the reason one the droplets behave like prism so there is dispersion second is internal reflection third is refraction and after that when light enter into our eyes we can see this natural phenomenon one more thing rainbow is always seen in the side opposite to the sun if sun is behind you then you can see rainbow in front of you because the phenomenal reflection involved the light rays get reflected and then enter into your eyes so agar tumko rainbow samne dikhai de raha hai to sun tumhare piche ki taraf hoga and that is because reflection is involved